you believe in truth? Yes. You believe in truth. Absolute truth. You believe in absolute right and absolute wrong. No. You don't believe in absolute right and wrong. No. Are you pretty sure or is it just an off the cuff response? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Okay, is it absolutely wrong for a man to violently rape a woman? warn you about the matrix, this might be your only opportunity to escape, unhook from the network and think for yourself. We're told that there is no such thing as truth, if you've heard that. We just heard it down in the cafeteria where we got on videotape. We went up to a table of students and I asked the young lady after about a minute of conversation, I asked her, is it absolutely wrong for a man to violently rape a woman? What did she say? She said, no. We got it on tape. We've done this all over the country. Universities, community colleges, talk shows on radio and TV. Then I asked the broader audience, the four students at the table, was it absolutely wrong for the Nazis to murder six million Jews? And one guy said, I don't believe in absolutes. It's not wrong to rape. It's not wrong to murder. And you know why they say this? Because they've been taught that there's no such thing as right or wrong. Why is that? Where does that come from? They've been taught there's no such thing as truth. I've heard that all over this country. And I ask a student or a professor who makes that argument in the debate, they say there's no such thing as truth. I say, is that true? And in less than eight seconds, you could dismantle their worldview because it crumbles. Because if your worldview is internally inconsistent, if it's irrational, then it must not be valid because you can't defend it. And if you can't defend your worldview, you should seek further and find a worldview that you can defend that's reliable. So when they say there is no truth, and we ask, is that true, we've just disproved their fundamental idea. So then they modify it and they say, well, you cannot know truth. And we ask, do you know that? Or they say there's no absolute truth. And we ask, is that absolutely true? See, if you're going to build your life on a set of ideas, make them stable enough so they cannot be destroyed within eight seconds. If someone tells you that you can only know that which you can learn with your five senses, Ask them, which of your five senses have told you that? Is it your sense of taste? Did that tell you that you could only know what your five senses can tell you? For me, that doesn't pass the stink test. I could smell a fish in that lie, that you could only know what your five senses tell you. It turns out that you can know a lot beyond your five senses. For the young women in the room that hope one day to be married, not all women want to be married, but some do. Some few do. And if a woman, before she commits herself to a man for life, she wants to know if he loves her. And what if you've been taught that you can only know based on your five senses? How are you going to figure out if this guy loves you? Maybe that's not an important decision anymore. But are you going to feel it with your fingertips? Are you going to taste it and find out if he loves you? See, when you believe a lie, when you're caught in the matrix, when you've been taught not to think for yourself, but to believe absurdities, it's not just your view on God that will be destroyed. It's your life and your family. My dear friend is Brian Rohrbach. You guys don't know him, you never heard his name, but you know about his son. Uh, I had the honor of performing a wedding for Brian Rohrbach last year, and his son Danny was killed at Columbine. When his son Danny was killed, Eric Harris had a t-shirt on, and it said natural selection. And after Columbine, a few of the parents got to watch the videos that Harrison Klebold made in advance. And you know what they loved and praised 
they love Charles Darwin and natural selection. Because the stronger organism could destroy the weaker organism, and that's power, and that's good, that's evolution, that's progress. And that's why the Nazis love Charles Darwin. They love Charles Darwin. And the Nazis were not the only atheistic evolutionary group that loved Charles Darwin. But you could go to the Soviet Union, and you could go to Mao in China, and to intolerant, tyrannical communist regimes around the world where they've murdered millions. But you know what happens when you go to a table in a lunchroom at a university and you talk about the millions that have been murdered? Their eyes glaze over. You talk about Danny Rohrbaugh being gunned down by Eric Harris, and that generates some degree of interest. Is there such a thing as right and wrong? Is there such a thing as absolute right and absolute wrong? I don't know what Miss Baker would say about that. But if, like so many other philosophy teachers, if she would follow in the footsteps of somebody like Bertrand Russell, then she'd say, there's no such thing as absolute right and wrong. I don't know how she would answer that. And if any of you would like to question or comment on anything I say, please feel free. And Miss Baker, if she'd like to represent herself, I invite her. But I'm here because ideas have consequences and your life hangs in the balance of what you believe. Yes, sir. I was just going to say, you said we could uh, say what you said. Um, I don't think raping women is right and wrong. I don't, or I don't think it's right. I think it's wrong. And I don't think the Jews being killed was right either. But I don't see how that proves any being such as I got. Okay, let me ask you this. When we've asked that question, and there's a couple of our viewers from, I've done a national TV show in 80 cities for some years, and just a couple of our viewers are here. Uh, and I recognize you from a seminar, sir, that so you were one of our viewers, you got in this class. Is that right? Uh, have you ever seen me ask that question on a show uh, of a college student who calls in, is it absolutely wrong to violently rape a woman? Many times. You Many invite times. them in your studio after they protest in the seminar. Right. You ask them on your show. You right, I ask them over the phone when they call in and in the <laughs> studio, and what is the typical response? Is it absolutely wrong to violently rape a woman? What's the response? No. No. When I ask them, is it absolutely wrong to murder six million Jews? What is the typical response? No. When you were there in the cafeteria when we got it on video, and we walked up to a random table, and the kids said, what, how they answered the questions? What did they say? Not absolutely wrong. Why do you think students all over this country say it is not absolutely wrong to violently rape a woman and to murder the Jews? That's why I'm here today, to warn you to get out of the matrix.